Okay gang, as I make progress on the 68 Mustang, I mentioned that I was going to convert it to disc brakes. And I've also mentioned this company, CSRP, it's one of their boxes. And when I ordered this kit I got three boxes and all of this stuff was in them. And uh, here's some information for you, there's CSRP, discbrakeswap.com, some phone numbers and fax numbers and this basically tells you what's in each one of the boxes so this kit is pretty complete um, I'll go through the parts that I have here I've got a set of brake hoses a pair of calipers I mean caliper mount brackets I'm sorry there's a uh, pair of dust shields with the hardware to install them a pair of slotted rotors, some single piston calipers, and again I'm not building a, you know, a hot rod or a sports car, I'm building a, a nice easy car to drive so I'm not going crazy on it. There's a set of wearable silver brake pads which I may upgrade to a, a better, brand, or better uh, grade of brake pad. There's these brackets here and I'm not exactly sure what they do but I'll find, figure that out when I get to that point. There's a set of new set of wheel bearings and dust gaskets or, or seals. Uh, some thread locker. Of course, your hardware kit. All the stuff you should need. There's a set of outer tie rod ends. A proportioning valve because I think it's designed to retrofit into your original um, metering block. So that'll take care of metering the brakes because I'm, I'm leaving drum brakes on the back and here is this is uh, there's some brake lines in here some hard lines and this is also for the uh, vacuum on the booster comes with a nice brake pedal even has a disc brake pad on it and a brake booster now I'm not going to install the booster and the pedal and all that stuff just yet because I don't even have the engine in it none of that stuff my goal is to get it on the ground so I'm going to be installing the rotors the brackets dust shields maybe the rubber lines and of course the calipers um, and associated parts that goes with those so I'll go through those steps and uh, hopefully I can get this together pretty soon Okay, I've opened up some of the packaging and the calipers are boxed 4012 and 4013 and I believe according to that the uh, 4012 is the right side and 4013 is the left side. Along with that you've got brackets. Now these brackets are not really labeled and I may have lost the instructions. I've had this, this kit for over a year but that's not to say I didn't open it up and or if I got the instructions separate and misplaced them I don't know but I'm pretty technically savvy I think I can figure this out so the two brackets mount up and if you look at it I think it's pretty self-explanatory you've got a big fat boss up here at an angle and then you've got another boss down low and if you look at it this one has, uh, this is all flush right here. That Those two uh, faces are flush. And on this side, you've got this big lump. So you're not going to put that big lump against the mating surface. So, let me switch hands. This will fit like that. It'll mount to that location and then mount down there to the lower hole. And that'll take care of the caliper uh, brackets. So I'll get those in place and proceed to the rest of uh, the pieces. Okay so I have the brackets mounted and I'm going through my pieces and parts and I find there's four rubber kind of bushing things and what I'm going to I feel safely assume is that that's where the uh, caliper bra uh, bolt rides in. So, with that, I believe, 
they're going to go in these holes right here, these big holes on the uh, bracket itself. And I'll have to pull that through with two hands, but that's where that's going to go. And then the bolt, I'll put a little grease in there when I put the caliper itself on. Now with the wheel bearings, they were nice enough to send some high temp wheel bearing grease. And I'm going to use that. Um, there's other ways to pack wheel bearings. And this is one of the tools. And basically, you would put your wheel bearing inside of this. You can see the grease residue there. You would close this down and then use a grease gun on the Zerk fitting and just pump it and pack the bearings. But since they provided me with some grease, I'm going to use it. And I'll just do a real quick demonstration of how you pack uh, wheel bearings. You're going to get some grease, put it in the palm of your glove. Don't do it to your hands because you don't want this stuff in your body. And you're going to slowly just kind of cup it through. And you keep doing that all the way around as you rotate it. And what that does is it forces the grease up into the bearing area. And you go around it several times. And you'll do it from the top side and the bottom side. Or the front and the back, however you want to look at it. And you're using your hand as a, as a press, let's say. You scrape that in, pack it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack all four of these wheel bearings so that I can install the uh, rotors. And I'll do more of that in just a minute. Okay, so I've installed the wheel bearing. The inner wheel bearing is slightly larger than the outer wheel bearing. And the race, which is what the wheel bearing actually rides on, is already installed. So that's in place, and then I'm gonna put the seal on. And these seals can be a little tricky sometimes. I've seen people use a block of wood and you know hit them square, try to hit them square. This I'm using a little body hammer. And uh, you just gotta catch it just right and get it to pinch into the opening. It might take you a few tries too because the paint gets in the way. You can hear it when it's seated. makes a different sound. But there's the seal and of course the bearing, it can still move in there um, until it gets seated onto the spindle itself. Okay, I have the bracket on and now I need to put the dust shield on. Put your little gasket on first and then your dust shield has a cutout on the bottom and that's for clearance of the lower control arm. So you line that up. It also gives clearance where the caliper goes. And this little piece here goes on top. It's kind of like a deflector, maybe to protect your uh, inner wheel bearing a little bit. That only fits one way. And then get your bolts in, tighten those up. Okay, so now I'm going to install the rotor onto the spindle. So, line it up, slide it on, and then I've got the outer wheel bearing, which is already greased up. Put that in place. And then there's a retainer washer with a tab on it that goes one direction and then the main nut now normally when I do these I just use a pair of channel locks or vice grips and it's kind of a feel thing um, you can rotate it and it's gonna you can adjust the nut as you go and I've been doing this for years this way and uh, Basically, you know, you can 
you got to find that happy spot where it turns nice and easy but it's not wobbling and that's that's usually your stop point point. and you may go back and forth a few times with the tightening of it you can feel it get kind of a little bit of a bind if you go too far and you don't want to do that so once you get it where you want it you get it the castellated shield nut thing and then a cotter pin and it should fit right through there and lock it in and that should take care of the rotor uh, other than putting on the dust cap and you just tap that on with the rubber mallet okay I'm going to show you the caliper now uh, these pads that came with the kit they are wherever silvers they sell them at advance and um, I thought I'd upgrade and get you know a better grade like a gold or even ceramics if they were available but apparently this is all they sell and that's fine it'll work um, but these calipers and this setup is the same from 68 to 73 and uh, as you can see there's got a little tab and that lines up with a notch on the caliper now the weird part to me was this hole right here the kit comes with these pins and it's got a little groove cut in it and the idea is it goes in that hole and then the spring clip and it's a little tricky to do um, I did the passenger side already but basically you have to push this over get it over the pin and what I did is I took the main bolt stuck it in the in the hole of the pad and while that's in place I used my other hand to push that down and I don't know if I can do this on camera or not but it's a little tricky to do that and you end up with having two of those clips on the outside and I'll get this on there and then I'll show you what I'm talking about and there's how it should look so now I'm gonna work on getting the inner pad installed on the uh, rotor and I'll show you that in just a minute okay earlier I, had, I think I had shown where I'd installed these rubber plugs there's one up on top and one at the you know bottom and that's where the retaining bolt for the caliper actually rides in now I thought it would, I'd be further ahead to put these on but that didn't work because I can't get the pad in without destroying the little plug so I've already pulled one of the plugs back out and I'm gonna pull the other one out and then I'll show you more of what I'm talking about okay so I have both the plugs out and I was mocking up the pad and I noticed right out of the box the pad fits a little too snug in my opinion kind of have to knock it in there I don't like that so what I did was I, I ground down the end of the pad just a little bit and uh, that allows it to fit in easier and eventually be able to come back out if I need to when I do maintenance so now that that's in place and it may not even hurt to put a little grease on there I'm, I may do that still um, that, then these two plugs would go into these holes up here okay I'm gonna put the caliper on and the caliper it comes with this little shield and it would slip around where the hose fitting goes and it's bolted on with the bolts that hold the caliper in place and there's a second set of bolts that are on the bracket assembly now this is raw this is how it came out of the package but I painted mine and I'll slip that on slip that over and then I'll install the bolts now again I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on these bolts I just haven't done it yet okay those two bolts are in place they're not tight yet I just snug them up a little bit and then there's two more bolts um, these are 14 millimeter 
and these two are 13 millimeter and you can see I've maybe see I've got one in down here at the bottom front edge of this bracket which would be this location and I'm going to put this one in up above and tighten those up now with that in the bracket in place of course the caliper in place there's a two little holes up here and that's what this clip does it'll clip into that and go on top of the pad itself and then it gets a bolt in it and that holds that pad from moving around and then I'll tighten that bolt up as well and that one is actually a 3 8 so there's one on top and then there's a second one that goes on the lower part of the pad or the opposite end of the pad I should say and there you have caliper mounted all the clips and fasteners in place hope that makes sense to you um, this will probably be, probably be the end of this video um, mainly because I don't need to have everything else hooked up yet and I'll make a second part whenever I connect uh, the uh, rubber lines and the hard lines and all that sort of thing but it's a different uh, a different system obviously the new stuff is quite a bit simpler but this worked and I'm sure to work fine on this car